Okay, what we'll do is we'll start here and work our way forward. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 20, Feed Forward. In today's episode, we did some more reflection on the work completed to date. We did share it and got some good feedback. Uh, some of the interesting comments that we got were... It's amazing how different the same piece sounds with different instruments. And another one said, I didn't realize at first that it was actually the same piece expressed two different ways. We started out by making another, another concept diagram for expressing in multiple dimensions. And the reason we did this is because we think this is really going to help us with uh, applying it to composing. So this is the traditional X, Y, Z um, axis that you get in, in school math. And then the trouble is, if you have more than three dimensions, like in music, you could have pitch, uh, instrumentation, uh, tempo, and then we have volume. Well, now we have four dimensions. And then you might have another one called like syncopated rhythm. So now you have five dimensions. So if you're trying to use traditional uh, pictures like this one, um, X, Y, Z, you can often, you know, you can do a good job with that. But the minute you add alpha and beta, so here alpha is uh, this kind of pink dimension, and then beta is this orange dimension, we're, we're still showing, we're still showing five X, Y, Z, alpha, beta here, but the diagram got very complicated very quickly. So that's the X, Y, Z display. If you use what we call a table display, then you just put each dimension in its own column. And if you have an X dimension, you put a one or a 0.7 or a 0.2, whatever, loud, soft. If you have a tempo, it could be slow, medium, fast, or some numerical value. And if you have instrumentation, you could have, you know, horn, trombone, uh, percussion, etc. And then if you go beyond that and say syncopation, well, now you can add your alpha. And then if you go beyond that and add, uh, I don't know, expressiveness, then you can add that. So you can add as many dimensions as you want in the table display without it getting unworkable. So that was a useful concept diagram. And, and it, we do feel that it relates to some of the other concept diagrams. We started with this one earlier in this series. We were kind of, we were sneakily making it look like it was an X, Y, Z. We were making it look like it was this kind of a thing, you know, which only has three dimensions. But here we snuck in six, six dimensions. I'm not, I can't draw on this, but, you know, imagine me drawing right here. Because we labeled each of these arms differently. This is visual images, and this is interactive scripts, and this is 3D objects, and text concepts, and aural sounds, and feed streams. So we, need, we knew if, if we hadn't done that, we would have had to go back to this thing and, and take, take this square looking thing and drag an entire copy up and, and make a third variable of some color, gamma. You know, it would be alpha, beta, gamma, x, y, z, alpha, beta, gamma. So that's why we're harping on going to a table display for um, thinking of our extra dimensions. And to be honest, a lot of our line diagram energy charts, if you think of a spreadsheet that has columns and rows, where we, we actually have been doing that, we've been giving values for the tempo, values for the volume, and so forth. We just were not thinking of it as multidimensional expression. And then also remember now we're, we're talking about multi-dimensions, not just what we can hear, but what we can see and what we can think of and what we use in 3D and what we use with interactive scripts and, and, and feed streams. So that was instructive. And, and in another project, this has already come up. Um, 
we call this lines of demarcation late last year. Um, the, the trouble when you have more than one dimension, if you have one dimension, like is it live or is it recorded, you know, that's pretty easy. Beep, boom, beep, boom. But then sometimes you get a fuzzy area. Is it live or is it recorded? Or is it a live performance using backing tracks? Well, now it's a little bit of both. And now you're in the fuzzy gray area, like the medium. Is it live or is it Memorex? And then, you know, is it a vocalist or is it um, instrumental? Oh, that should be easy. It's vocalist or it's instrumental. But what if the vocalist is, I don't know, singing through a theremin or something? And now all of a sudden, you know, you get another middle area. And then the minute you take two dimension, this, that, or the other thing, and have fuzzy areas, it just gets complicated. And already you can see us starting to move to a table display here. And, and show where the zones of uncertainty are and so forth. A little bit abstract. Nevertheless, we think it's really going to help us out with kind of using this simple point of view here, the table display. So, so we spent a fair amount of time on that. Then, then we said we wanted to start working with the 2332 scale, and we kind of wanted to follow an approach um, of the feed stream idea, which 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 we had already just finished with 3663. So remember, the feed stream approach says you start with your your um, your tonality reference scale. Actually, we started with our reference sheet, which is this thing. This tells it what are the notes of the scale, what are the modes. So the new scale, <coughs> the new scale we're working with, C D F. A flat B is our minor scale. C, E flat, F, G flat, A is our major scale. The modes are D minor and E flat for the major. And this time we have none function, no function notes, A flat for the minor, A for the major. And this time we have urge notes that are different. So B is the urge note for the minor scale, and G flat is the urge note for the major scale. So this is called 558, and the 55 tells us that this is a pentatonic, which is Greek for five, minor, major, and then when you add all the notes together, you get eight. And if you have the last scale we had was 556, five, and we, we were sharing a lot of notes, but in this scale set, we've got a lot of unique notes. So we made sure we had all of these chords uh, were reflected accurately down here and reminded ourselves oh my god we have 56 chords to work with in this scale partly because we have eight notes total instead of only six so we were listening to it like this going that's the minor And the major and it sounded so pretty we played them together over and over and all of a sudden we said oh, let's make a composition so we made an impromptu composition over here which um which basically sounded like we just we just ran the scales starting on f again and then we started on the next scale up like this and then we went back and picked out chords to add to it. And, and we picked them out from our, our tonality reference area because that's what it's for, you know. Let's make this a little prettier to look at. And then we, we kind of picked them out based on, you know, we, we kind of used a little bit of music theory to pick them out. For example, down here, we were starting on an A flat, so we looked for a chord that would start on A flat, and we found one, and G flat, and G flat, so that was easy. And then it has that kind of rising type of thing. And then, and then, and then it wasn't quite so easy, but here we said, well, the roll starts on a B, and this chord has a B, has a B in it, and this chord, well, it starts on an A, and this chord doesn't start on A, but it, it has an A. It has an A in it. Thank you. So that was easy to pick. And then we decided we really wanted to end on a tonic. So it turns out that this is a tonic chord for the minor. 
and this is a tonic chord for the major. So yay, end on a tonic, very traditional. And, and we end up going from dominant to tonic. So that cadence is a very traditional cadence. Dominant, 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 tonic, tonic. And we were varying minor major. So a very pleasing combination. The only thing that we got stuck with kind of was we wanted to start with tonics here. Well, actually, we wanted to start with something that that had the root in it. And, and it turned out that if we wanted this solution, we could, and we didn't want to reuse any chords. So, <laughs> so we ended up going and looking at our reference area and say, are there any chords that have you know, C's that are tonic-ish, and and no, they're not. Are there any chords that have C in them? Yes, yes, uh, that we haven't already used, that sound halfway decent. And anyway, we ended up picking the C2-4, this one, and the C3-3. Three, three. And we picked, and we said, well, as long as, using, as long as we are using the full scale, it might as well be ambivalent because we couldn't find a minor chord, a unique minor chord that would fit the scale nor a unique major chord. So we used the full scale. I said, what the heck, let it be ambivalent. And then we just for, for grins we had two chords that we found that we could work with here and so we put them in there so that was our starting point and then we said okay well this is now what we declared to be an impromptu work area let's start working with it and let's make some variations well the first variation is simple we just stripped out all the chart junk we, so it's going to be darned if we're going to copy all that stuff so we stripped out the chart junk not that we have anything against chart junk, it's very important. We need to keep it. It's our audit trail. But then we started, we had an idea, and so we made what we called our second variation. And the first thing we did is we, we just made them run right into each other. Then, then, when we were shortening it, we ran into a little issue at the end because we had used four chords, and we were comp four chords were used in four bars, but we were shortening to three bars. We had to kind of uh, split these chords up a a across the bar lines, and and then when we were listening, and so it sounded that wasn't too hard. I mean, it, it we, we figured it out. Here. But then we started hearing a backbone. And we, we didn't have any backbones down here, guys. There was no backbone. So he said, aha, a backbone. Let's put a backbone in. So we put a backbone in there, and we liked it. But the trouble was we had no backbones up here. So now we had to figure out how to put a backbone up here. And we did. We followed the pattern here. We said this backbone used the F and the A flat, which was the third note and the fourth note. And then it used the A and the F, which was the fifth note and the third note. So three, four, five, three. And it turned out that that was a pleasing pattern everywhere. And so now we had a, a brand new backbone line, added the backbone. And then we have to end, you know, so we added that. Except it's not in the backbone, it's in the cadence. So finally, with all that done, and the cadence is broken up to now match the backbones, uh, well, they weren't broken up, they were left standalone, we got this. Oh, I forgot. There is one other thing we added, we added a shimmer tone. And the shimmer tone was a whole nother exercise in picking something out of here. It was based on listening. Mm -hmm. 
so that was kind of cool. We ended up using the neutral note F, the minor nun note A flat, the minor urge note B. See everything we're talking about is right over there. See it? And then we use the uh, minor mode note D, which is right there. And then we use the shimmer note neutral F. And then finally, 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 put all together four parts. We have four parts. So we got very excited about that and said, oh my God. And we just took that section, the second variation, and we kind of extracted it, exported all the files into a project folder and decided to make a, um, into a project folder, uh, this one, and, and make it, do something with it. So the first thing we worked with was our MIDI animation, and that turned out to be really fun. And it's pretty clear when you look at it, four notes are not being used. Eight notes are are being used and that is why it's called C uh, 2332558. There's the eight notes. Then we went ahead and did a MIDI animation, try, uh, magic animation, trying to focus on the four parts and give them their own actors. So this concludes today's stream. Um, our ideas for next time are to uh, further share the work. We're getting some good feedback now. Um, pursue the piano kit that we worked on uh, in the last stream. And we're, we're thinking about somehow combining that with some work group classes and keep working with our 2332 for sure. So thank you for your time, attention, curiosity, and interest. We appreciate it. It adds energy to the stream. Do come back. Do take care. And do keep on streaming.